Hi, I'm Dr. Christine Hanlon from the University of Central Florida, here to talk to you about forms of address and how to address people when you first meet them. So let's talk about some of the major forms of address that we often have in society and what would be appropriate in certain situations. So now we have a screen that has a bunch of titles that we often use in society. So let's talk about exactly what each one of these means and how we should use these as a form of address. So the first one is miss. Miss has a long history and it is typically used to address a girl. Okay, so someone who is feminine, but young. And so um, usually you're talking a child when we use the word miss. So I would be aware of speaking to any adult <laughs> and using the, for, the word miss, um, that could be dismissive. So um, I would be aware, stay away from that one. <laughs> the next one is misses, M-R-S. So misses is a form of miss, but it's for adults. So it is referring to um, a feminine adult in society. However, it's a very specific form um, of address. So when we're talking about misses, it typically addresses the person in terms of their um, relationship with a man. That's the history of it. So misses is what we use for a married woman in our society. Um, because it does, is the basis of it is its affiliation with a man um, and marriage historically um, in a heterosexual context. It is um, often not perceived in a good light nowadays. Let's just say it that way. <laughs> it's offensive. So um, keep that in mind. So back 50 years ago, in the 1970s, um, they came up with a new address that became really popular. It was existing before then, but that's when it became really popular, was MS. It was even a magazine that was started by Gloria Steinem and friends to, to talk about women's issues of the day in the 1970s. So MS, Ms. So that is for what we usually use instead of misses. So I just made a big X on misses as well as miss um, and in terms of using it to address someone. It's just safer to say miss because then it doesn't address their relationship with a man and it addresses them as an individual. This is for a woman, an adult woman, an adult feminine individual in our society. The next one is mister. Mister is typically used across age groups. Um, it doesn't have any dependency on the status of a man um, or a boy. And so Mr. is typically used when someone is a masculine individual, a masculine Mr. MR. MX is a newer form of address um, and it is pronounced mix and uh, mix is gender neutral. So oftentimes you will see people who have MX and sometimes people get confused about what that exactly means. And it's just basically Mr. or Ms., but not adding the gender context to it. Um, like, why is that even important, you know, what someone's gender is? So mixes is, is a um, more inclusive um, type of form of address that you can use. Now, I will say that I probably wouldn't use mix um, unless somebody has asked you to use it because it's not in widespread use quite yet. I think it will be in another 10 or 15 years. Uh, right now, though, um, a lot of people don't know what it means. And if you're, you're like, hmm, hmm, it's not just you. <laughs> it's, it's a newer term. So um, if you refer to um, someone who does not know what mix means as mix, they might be confused. Like, what? why are you calling me that? Um, a lot of times um, it, it just comes across as they, they're curious, like, what, what are you? And at first, they, they might even not even address it. They might just think you mispronounced something. So um, mix. Um, in specific situations when people have asked for that for now. Um, in the future, we might be using that for everyone. I hope that is the case. <laughs> the next one is doctor. Now, doctor is an interesting form of dress. Um, we often grow up talking to um, our um, pediatrician and referring to them as doctor, right? So there's this assumption that doctor is for medical doctors, but doctor is actually a form of dress for anyone who has earned a doctorate. And there are lots of different forms of doctorates. A medical doctor is an MD, um, and that is one form of doctor. 
Um, another form of doctor is a doctor of philosophy. And this one gets really confusing because people think that, oh, you're, you, are a, you have a doctorate in philosophy. Well, yes and no. <laughs> so um, like my doctorate is a doctor of philosophy. It's a PhD, that's a doctor of philosophy, but it is in communication advertising. Um, and so I am not in the discipline of philosophy, does that make sense? But usually when we're talking about um, intellectual degrees in terms of um, academia, um, we're talking about PhDs usually. Um, there's also JDs, Juris Doctorate. That's someone who has a uh, doctorate in law. Um, so there are lots of different forms of doctor that you could use. Um, and it applies to a lot of different people. So oftentimes, you know, if there's an emergency or something and you need a health pr practitioner, somebody's like, is there a doctor here? We, all, we pretty much know it's, it's not me, right? It better not be me, because we're in big trouble if it's me. You don't want me helping out in an emergency situation that requires medical attention. That is not my area of expertise at all. So, um, but we understand what that means, but there is an assumption that that only means medical doctor, but that does mean lots of other things. So um, I, I have a PhD, I, I am considered a doctor. Um, another form of address is professor. I am not a professor. Um, and this is part that new students often get very confused with. So I have a whole nother video about that. Um, different status at um, universities for faculty. So um, you could, it's always better to overextend than to underextend, right? Like, so if you're talking to a woman, uh, someone who's feminine in our society and they're an adult, it's better to say Ms. than it is to say Miss. It's always better to overextend. And then they might be like, oh, well, I'm, you know, 16, I'm, I'm younger, you know, they could always correct you with that. Um, and younger kids usually just go with it. They're not going to correct you. But um, in the case of um, if you called me a professor, if you said Professor Hanlon, and I, I would probably, I would say, oh, I, you, Dr. Hanlon, right? I'm not a professor. That's a different um, level. It's a different um, type of faculty member. So we'll talk about that in another video. But it's always better to over than to under. So um, if someone does have a doctorate and you call them Mr. or you call them, you refer to them by Ms., that could, they could be offended by that. And, and many faculty members are. And there's good reason for that. One of the reasons is because most of the time when that mistake's made, it's made with women. And so it is a form of uh, gender bias. And um, it can be very offensive. So you wanna keep that in mind. As a faculty member who teaches communication, um, I understand that a lot of people just don't understand forms of address, which is why I do a video about forms of address. I am a doctor. I'm Dr. Hanlon. And um, so I would correct you and say, actually, it's Dr. Hanlon. Or I would just probably just whatever, you know, and just continue the conversation. But some faculty members, it's a big deal. So you want to make sure that you're over using the higher form of address rather than the lower form of address in most situations. Um, so always keep that in mind. It will help you with your, um, your conversations. It will help you with your relationships. And it will make you a more effective communicator.